Tell you what's changed right now. In a different field, different lane right now. Now I'm in the mud, switching lanes right now. Passive income getting paid right now. Used to roll around with sinners, bulldozers and killers. Now we focused on figures, three course meals for dinners, five star suites and villas. Now the swag is different. This can't come out. <laughs> Mama made it. <laughs> nah, you're good, bro. We saying he, he's, he's, and there's a church. Down, there's a church like there's a couple churches about. Fam, because when I pulled in, the aunties was looking at me. I was like, oh, like <laughs> they're like, oh, bro, oh, we fam, got a nice guy coming to our church today. Bro, 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 I was playing Rilo and fuck the fan, innit? it? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I oh, know, wow. bro. I hit that, I hit that, I hit that corner. There was but <laughs> fam, they. Ah, you know when I heard auntie go, ah, ah, ah. Really? Ah, yeah. I, I was like, oh, shit, yo, dads might be pissed at me. He might get no, a phone call. Like, ah, that's hilarious. They, they, they might even call him. Like, ah, ah, ah. You can't let these people come to the show now. Nah. I, I was thinking, I was thinking on a Sunday. Nah, nah, Rilo nah. Rilo fucked the fans. Hilarious. Fire, Rilo, that's good. Rilo Rodriguez. Yeah, Rilo. Yeah, Rilo. That's my, that's my kid. I've been bumping him, bro. Oh, when did you quit? Are you Pentecostal or Roman Catholic? Uh, more Pentecostal, innit? I thought so. Because you, what, what, what's your background? Nige? Yeah. I'm Zim. Yeah, yeah, I did some research, you know. I watched the, <laughs> I watched the Nige Bible video. Yeah, oh, shit. Nige <laughs> I watched the, yeah, yeah, Nige Bible podcast, didn't it? Oh, that's good. Let me just rest for a bit. No, you can't, bro. help yourself, man. No, I appreciate it, bro. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my top card. I went... I, 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 um, I actually finished the second book just now. What do you mean you finished the second book? It's, it's cool, because the, the second book is like 85, or eight, call it 85,000 words, mm -hmm. man. But I wasn't, the story wasn't done. Mm -hmm. I was on like the last two chapters of it. Mm -hmm. Actually, fuck, just go get your, get changed, no, no, and no, then we'll speak about it on camera. Yeah, yeah, it's calm, man. Yeah, that's calm, that's calm. I'm just changing my t-shirt, bro. Rah! Because um, you know what? But I went to do my hair first. Uh -huh. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to like, I, I, I didn't want to wear the t-shirt I'm going to wear for the body, doing uh -huh. my hair, because uh -huh. the person doesn't want to. Might mess got, up and stuff. Yeah, and like, she, she, she got like young kids. You never uh -huh. know, like, young uh -huh. might run up to me and be like, Apple Yo. juice. <laughs> yeah, I was like, nah, you know. And then I, so, so I said, let me just try to be best, best prepared when I can be. So I feel like I'm taking in one of my friends. Why? Because I'm, I'm not wearing his brand. Oh wow, you're supposed to. Um, uh, no, no, uh -huh. he, he, I, just, um, I just, you know, I, you I just, just do it all for the strength. Yeah, yeah, like, I just show love like that. But you I, get a fam, of course. We're gonna speak about it on the pod as well, bro, innit? No, no, don't worry, don't worry, it's calm. It's, 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 it's up to everything, anyway. No, but hey, but, but, but I appreciate this though, bro, because even like these looks, I don't think people like. No, but you're good. You're just a good you as well, isn't it? Like you're like I mess with you, innit? Like I don't. And for instance, innit? I don't uh, understand. How somebody can show love to the way the, the degree you show love and not not I because I'm even gonna lie like bare times in, within the month yeah. there's there hasn't probably been a month that has gone past since around uh, maybe earlier on this year even in it yeah, where I'm like no up. where I'm like for, with you oh, to yeah. try and figure out where I'm I can get you in the air in the air and whereas I was oh yeah cool. As in, yeah, you know what? Boom. Because obviously you told me about uh, the, the second book launch, innit? Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, you know, this will be calm, innit? Just, uh, it's, it's, it's that perfect timing. Yeah, time, perfect timing. Time, especially because you said you were available on a uh, Sunday. Yeah, that's what, bro, because, bro, um, we're, we're touching that again later. Bro, I've, I've, I've been working six hour, six six days a week. Mm -hmm. Um, we, Are we recording now? Yeah, we're recording, man. We're oh, recording, man, innit? Because, um... That was a clean boy. Oh, I love, bro, love, <laughs> Love, I, I was laughing. I was mm -hmm. saying, um, technically speaking, I, I should be the best dressed on the. Who's <laughs> the, the that No, no, no that's uh, like, I already know. Is that I, your I, thing? I just, yeah, yeah like, because even I'm coming out with merch. I sent you some of the pictures of the merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm coming out. With, well, I've been, I've been a fly boy mm -hmm. from from young. Uh -huh. So it's 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 only natural. Well, what do you do for a living, even? No, I, I work on the I work on the railway. Um, I, I, okay, I knew that. You must have told me that, didn't it? I did, but it's. <sighs> It's, it's it's a really funny story because mm -hmm. the position I'm in now it took me like seven years mm -hmm. to get to the to get to the position I'm in now, mm -hmm. and it took a lot of trial tribulation because I I started on the railway at 21. I wasn't um me personally I'm mm -hmm. not the smartest book wise. Is it what did you get for your GCSEs? Oh GCSEs, yeah, come on! Like, I don't know. I I got five Bs. Okay. Um. But bro, I'm not. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm dyslexic. <laughs> yeah, I think I am as well, man. But do, do you know what? The, um, 
so I've, I've been going through the book with one of my one of my close friends, and I miss I misspelled something like a hundred and twenty nine times. Which which what was it? The nah. <laughs> no, I'm no, gonna, no, 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 I fucked that book. T H E all nah, the time. It, it, like, it, but when I do it first, it wasn't there. Um, I can't remember what the word was. When she sees this, she'll probably remember. Mm-hmm. She'll probably comment. It wasn't like a, a something like a crazy hard spelling. Mm-hmm. It was something very minute. Mm-hmm. So it's like um, it's it, but spelling for me is is a struggle. Mm-hmm. But when I articulate and speak to somebody, but was it a written manuscript you did or yeah, typing? Um, typing, typing. Because even uh, typing, it's funny because the first book. Predominantly, I wrote on my phone on mm-hmm. on notes, and the second book has been predominantly all on my all on my laptop. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like figuring out. But the second book seems to be written a lot better than the first book. Mm-hmm. But obviously, that's growth. Mm-hmm. When you um, the longer you've been doing something, the better you get. It just takes a long time to get. Well, and how long have you been actually on this uh, writing uh, process? You reckon probably from from about twenties, I started writing. Okay, but twenties was like. Dibbling, dabbling, writing. Mm-hmm. Writing then, what um, exactly? Oh, just like loads of little different stories. And like, um, I've, I've always been relatively good with my words. Mm-hmm. So generally speaking, that was normally with females. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So like, but you just like, you just show up on your tools. And like, um, I've always loved storytelling. Mm-hmm. I love storytelling from, from young. Like just in, even in the sense of like, so you know when you're in secondary school, and um, if you were one of the popular kids and you got to hang around the block and so on, mm-hmm. the next day everybody comes up to you like, "Yo, I heard this and this happened." Mm-hmm. So like, you you retell the story, mm-hmm. and as you're doing that, you kind of like learn to grow and add extras to the add add like extra bits of sauce, sauce to yeah, the story, yeah, yeah. innit? It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, but like, even like little things like that. So I loved it. And then in terms of writing, it's funny because I started writing a book called Inside the Mind of a Gladiator because mm-hmm. that's that's my favorite time period, like Vikings, ancient Greece, um, and and obviously in um, ancient Egypt. Those are my that's my favorite time period in history. Mm-hmm. And um, so inside of the Man of Gladiator was the first story I started writing. Mm-hmm. I was probably like ten thousand words in, but that was going to be such a long winded book, and I only had the idea for one book. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, it don't really make sense because I'm just going to put out one book and be done with it. Mm-hmm. It's going to take me five years to write it. Why don't I take the idea mm-hmm. and put it into a series? Mm-hmm. And that's where the birth of Tales of a Lonely Wanderer come originated from. Mm-hmm. And then certain things happened in my life as well that helped inspire the series of Tales of Lonely Wanderer. So wait, so how long ago was it? Is this the Yeah, so that, how long has this been published in the making? No, no, in the actual oh, making. In the making. Oh, this. easy. E- um going on nine years from today's date, Fuck. as in the whole series. Um, the worst thing is me personally, mm-hmm. the way I write is a bit messed up because mm-hmm. I don't write um in the organic way of writer write. So mm-hmm. most writers have a storyboard, mm-hmm. they break everything down. So how do you write that? I would compare how I write to a freestyle write to a freestyle artist, something similar to like a Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. So the whole series is all in my mind. Mm-hmm. There's no breakdowns of like characters, everything. Mm-hmm. The whole series is completely in my mind. There's nothing, there's no paperwork or nothing for mm-hmm. me to look at. Everything is just completely in my head. So I have the whole five series, mm-hmm. the whole the, the whole five books in my head. I know what the whole storyline is going to be. Okay. When I write, I just add in all the I extra some time. questions to even ask you about it because I basically, I didn't get through all of it. However, I basically... Yeah. Uh, using a bit of uh, smart, I yeah. managed to get through to the actual like uh, uh, main plot. Well, you want something in particular? I just want a, a, a bin in it. I just want to put my chewing oh, gum out. Over there, man. That's calm, man. Sorry, bro. That's calm. What was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah, so in fact, let me just get Let's just start the pod in it. In, oh, calm. No, we've already started, innit? Yeah. But, but uh, basically, obviously, I know you know about the podcast, innit? Because obviously, you're nine times out of ten, yeah, when you, when I post something, you're near enough one of the first, isn't it? On many occasions uh, to to like it. So obviously, welcome. This is called This Can't Come Out. Now, obviously, you know, we have beautiful, unfilled conversations. And uh, basically, so what tends to happen is when well, you're speaking your mind and speaking your heart, and we're being completely honest, we say some shit that we probably don't want the world to know. Yeah. So in saying that, uh, and before any of this gets uh, put out, 
even though I'm, I'm, you're probably not going to say that I'm crazy anyway. You might not say nothing crazy. Who knows, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you know. I'll send it to you first and foremost, and then you'll be like, oh, you see that part over there? I don't, uh, I don't actually want that part to come out. Okay. And then we'll remove it, isn't it? So <laughs> no shock jock antics, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just trying to get good content uh, out of you, isn't it? Okay. Now, uh, how we usually have to start is, how do we know each other? So, but I guess in this case, how did we come across one another, isn't it? Okay, perfect. Um, That is actually super dope because... uh. I come across the podcast, made you think, posted a clip of Adam. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's how I was introduced to the pod. So then like, um, I started doing my due diligence, mm-hmm. going back and looking at past episodes. And then I was like, um, bro, did, me personally, I just rock out with energies, how you was as a person and how you come across and what like, what the information that you was trying to get out of people. Because a lot of times on a lot of pods, it's... um. I know with disrespect to a lot of other pods, it's quite mundane. It's just who should pay for a first yeah, date, yeah. that that sort of repertoire. And I liked your pod because that's not mm-hmm. that's not the current thing. It's not you, the bread and butter of it. Yeah, yeah. You, you're touching on so many different bases, and you're giving so many different people opportunities. And something that I feel is missing from our culture a lot of times, because a lot of us tend to forget where most of us first generation born in England. Mm-hmm. So some of us are still learning how to acclimate and actually what what fields to get into working mm-hmm. in England. Because mm-hmm. our parents don't have the background knowledge. Mm-hmm. They come over with a background knowledge of, of Africa, which is you have to get education. Mm-hmm. And that is 100% true in Africa. In England, education helps to some degrees, but at the same time, you can make a lot of money mm-hmm. without having an education. Mm-hmm. We're beginning to learn that. And a lot of your episodes have been dropping gems, different fields. So just a lot of different oh, yeah, information. Man. I appreciate you, man. Uh, and yeah, what I would say as well is, uh, like I said, um, um, I've gone, I've done my research in you, uh, into you as well. And obviously you told me about your book uh, a long time ago, obviously yeah. such as life certain times is like, I didn't get around to reading it that, uh, that time. But obviously, um, basically, I uh, wait. Bear, bear in mind, your name is Al- Alaric Pillay. That's it. That's it. Pillay? Alaric, that's it. Alaric Pillay. That's correct. Oh, yeah, Alaric correct. Pillay. Okay, cool. That's and correct. obviously, you're from uh, uh, Zim. That's correct. Yep. Um, Born in Zimbabwe. Well, have you got any siblings as well? Born. I yeah. uh, wonder, did you come uh, into UK? I moved to England when I was seven. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was quite an ordeal. Because mm-hmm. coming from Zim's, we was um, very, very lucky. Mm-hmm. We was a little bit well off, so mm-hmm. um, swimming pool in the garden. Uh, okay. We had a, a a maid. I believe they're called nannies in England. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, and I was going to private school in Zims. Well, what did your parents do for a living? Are they, are they aristocrats or something? <laughs> no, 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 oh, no. Yeah. You know, but no, Africa is different. Africa, yeah. you can. M- m- my dad used to work for a company called Chitrons. Mm-hmm. And um, he was really like sales. So my dad would travel like a lot of Africa. Oh, okay. Just doing like business to business sales. And um, my mom, uh, my mom's mother was like a hustler. She come to Greece mm-hmm. and um, well, she went to Greece and she was nannying for a year. This would have been the um, the 80s and 90s. She, mm-hmm. I don't know how she managed to do it. She, hus- she hustled, made some bread. She was able to give um, deposit money to all of her she has four kids. Mm-hmm. Her, four, her four kids, she gave them deposit money for their first house. What? Houses in the UK? Or no, 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 no. Oh, this, okay, this is in Zim. This is okay, in Zim. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if that was yeah. England, it'd be different. I'd be living different, man. I, oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. the, uh-huh. it's, it's funny because the transition from Africa to England mm-hmm. was, because um, to go from living like that, mm-hmm. then we come to England and was living in shared accommodation when we first come mm-hmm. to England. And well, as, a, as a seven-year-old, did you know it's the difference straight away? Uh, it's funny um, because when we first, the, the very first day when we come to the house, um, obviously I didn't, I didn't really know what shared accommodation. Mm-hmm. So there's multiple people in like loads of different rooms. So mm-hmm. I'm like, right, we just upgraded the staff, isn't it? Like, uh-huh. <laughs> like okay, you, yeah, got, yeah. you got bare new staff. Uh-huh. And then like, um, like we went to the fridge, like we take, I, I didn't know, like, oh, you know so you're taking other people's shit. Yeah. Oh, like, wow. you know, but we didn't, obviously we didn't uh-huh. know. We're just coming from like a case where that's, we were just, just at our fridge in there. Mm-hmm. So then my, my, my mom had to be like, yo, you can't, you can't do that no mm. more. And that was like the very first day, like. Oh, wow. But we still didn't, when you're that young, you still don't notice those things or mm. understand the difference. It's only. What part of uh, London were you living in at this point in time? So when we come to London, we moved to Belvedere. So Belvedere, oh shit, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we say South London, uh-huh. people who live in London, they, 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 yeah, they tried to sell us. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's the outskirts of South. Well, and that was in, uh, what was it, in, uh, about uh, early 2000s, yeah, primary school, primary school, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, 
You're three and four, and it's... <laughs> you're saying South London don't claim you guys. It's, hey, you, I, I don't know where it is. That's like what I'm used to now. I, bear my friends are bought property around that area now, isn't it? Be- because 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 of the transport system into London, mm-hmm. I'm guessing most of them will work in London. The yeah, commute yeah, yeah. is it's, it's, it's twenty not that thirty bad. minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's 20... nicer train to London Bridge. I know one goes to. And the house prices are are a lot better mm-hmm. down in Kent, so uh-huh. it, ma- it makes a lot more sense. But Kent is very different now. Mm-hmm. It's funny with everything that's happening in the UK right now because when we first come. Pardon me. When we first come to Kent, it was um, way more racist, I guess. Yeah, I was I, uh-huh. I, I was looking for the politically correct way yeah, yeah, to, calm, man. to describe it. Correct. Yeah. Well, uh, can you uh, describe a time where you experienced racism? Yeah, loads. We um, so because I know some people that live around the area that told me about Kent as well. Them times, bro. Like it, when I say it was, it was um, quote to quote quote unquote the trenches because uh-huh. we used to have a lot of racist fights. There's a gang called RA. And yeah, yeah, I heard about them. We used to get into it with RA. What's, this, what's it called again? Racist what? attack. Racist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. RA is the politically politically correct name. Uh-huh. I believe they even changed to Red Alert. They uh-huh. used to be like, Nah, I don't mean it. Don't mean racist <laughs> attack, mate. It's Red Alert. Red Alert. Uh, I've heard of them still. Yeah. But we used to get into, and um, I have an older brother to answer. You, you saw oh, us wow. earlier, so he's four years older. Um, it's it's, it's really funny because when we first come to the country, we both had uh, African accent. Mm-hmm. In in today's time, mm-hmm. if you have an African accent, you kind of looked at like um you're a bit mystique. Yeah, There's a mystique yeah, yeah. to you. It's cool to have an to have an African uh-huh. accent. At that juncture, yeah, probably hell. Yeah, you went. Why well, yo, your brother went straight to secondary school then, didn't it? Yeah, he went to, and he was he wasn't in school for a while mm-hmm. because I I don't know. Um, it took him a bit longer to get in school. Like the processing for him to get into school was a bit longer. Mm-hmm. He went to Abbey Wood School first, and then he moved over to Saint Columbus. Mm-hmm. I think that was like a blessing and a curse because that allowed him to um, acclimate. And his first school, mm-hmm. I think, like, like, like me, uh, yeah. he had to get rid of that accent uh, quick. Yeah. You kind of like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, sad man. Yeah, but at, at the time period, that's what it was like. Mm-hmm. If you had an accent, you, yeah, yeah, you was gonna be, you're gonna be getting into scraps. The even black people will get onto you as well. well that's what was that. Yeah. The, the butt of the jokes. Yeah. We, as soon as you say anything, you shut up, you freshie. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was a different time. Even for me, um, I had to, I had to, I had to switch up my accent quick. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was because when we first come, I think Ali G was the most popular movie, uh, and I had no idea uh, about Ali G at the time. But I, I had to, I had to adjust quickly. I had to start throwing in it for no reason. Oh Just, wow! That's, that's how I, that's how I wow, learned the English man, accent. That's sad, man. But, um, well, and what have you got? Have you got any like specific stories? Um, yeah, no, no, for the racist one. So when, when we skip forward to that like, secondary school. It's funny because um, my brother got hit in the head with a hammer as well. What? Yeah, as, as, I say as well because I got hit in the head with a hammer as well. We used to, it was ongoing. So it was from like- What, um, what fucking age? Uh, I got hit in the head with a hammer in year 11. Oh my and, God. Uh, and my brother was the same, was the- I, this, this same racist group? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 would, I, would say, I would say his name, but uh-huh. like, yeah. I, we, won't, we won't do that there. But um, I, I told a story of how I got hit because that that's, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a funny story. So I was still in primary school. When my brother got hit under the hammer, I was still in primary and I mm. went to the hospital with him because they'd, um, early, earlier on that day, my brother and a few of his friends, they was out looking for them, caught them slipping in a, in a coffee shop, mm-hmm. done what they'd done. Uh-huh. But the funny oh, thing- Oh, so they retaliated on your brother? Yeah, but it was, <laughs> okay. bro, it, it, there, yeah. there's so many stories from our neighborhood that was that like back and forth, back and forth. But the difference was, whenever you was, you was never fighting your age mates. Mm-hmm. So it was like, because, for example, my, my brother would be like 15, 16. After they'd done that, they pulled up in white vans and that. Mm-hmm. So you was, yeah. they was getting into it with like 19, 20-year-olds. Yeah. So they all had cars and that. So you, you, it was uh, an uneven playing field. Uh-huh. It was like, um, it, 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 weren't, it, weren't, it weren't even fair. And them not, uh, and, um, the day that, because so they caught two guys, my brother and them not caught two guys in a, in a cafe, mm-hmm. done what they'd done, just bopping around, laughing, kiki keen. Mm-hmm. They just see um, two vans pull up. Oh yes! Oh yeah, f- beep beep. Uh-huh. But I'm like 10, 20 white guys jumped out. Oh, what a start! Everyone just ducked out. They caught a couple of them slipping, um, hit them and the, hit them with the hammers. People's heads was bust open. Fuck um, you know, man. Well, well, somebody had braids. The braids saved. <laughs> the uh-huh. doctor said the braids saved them because um. Wow! Yeah, yeah. From, from from the hit. Then fast forward to my story. I was in eleven. We finished school. I I went to I went to St Columbus. Our school was notorious mm-hmm. for getting into um, a lot of after school fights. We was the bad boys in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So our school used to finish early. 
we finished two thirty. All the surrounding schools finished at three fifteen. Mm-hmm. So we finished school when I. Um, well, did you have to start earlier? Yeah, we st- we started at eight thirty as well. So and when I did was, they start? Um, like nine. Yeah, like oh, nine. Okay. They, they wanted. They, they, they was trying to. They was trying to. Um, like make sure we there's no manage the time so you yeah. guys don't cross paths. Yeah, yeah. our, our, our school was so notorious. Um, the newspapers put a report about they called it Black Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, with some race attack, with some race attacks. Even inside the school, one of the kids got stabbed close to the eye mm-hmm. during one of the racist fights. That was in my brother's last year of school, the year before I come to the school. Mm-hmm. That was the like one of the big big fights that made like newspapers. Mm-hmm. The kid who got stabbed in the eye was he was a a, a white kid fighting with the black guys, mm-hmm. so he was actually on our side. He's the mm-hmm. he's one of the only ones that everyone's still cool with. Mm-hmm. So I was um it it, it was like, notoriously known, but mm-hmm. with my story, you know when you, so we, once we finished school, the ice cream van always used to pull up. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> all the kids are by the ice cream van. On this particular day, the ice cream van's there, and you just see all the youngers running away. Mm-hmm. Like they're just running away screaming. Then I look up, I see like four white guys starting to walk down. Mm-hmm. I, I, in my younger days, I was a little bit more gassed, um, mm-hmm. if you will. So as you do, I turned around, pulled up my, pulled up my little trousers. Mm-hmm. So, hey, nobody run. Mm-hmm. Nobody run. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I walk around the corner. Then there's like, there's three of them walking towards me. I look around, there's a couple. There must be like six, seven men behind me. I look around, I'm like, I do the nod and I walk uh-huh. up to them. What, what one? I get close. I'm literally like almost squaring up to one, yeah? yeah. And he had his hand under his jumper like this, but I'm just thinking, right, cool, it's probably stunting yeah. or he's got a bottle. I can, I can bob and weave like, uh-huh. I see, I know what Floyd's doing, man. Uh-huh. I, I got uh-huh. the moves in it. <laughs> Bro, I, I, I get close. He, um, he pulls it out, draws back. When I see it's a hammer, I'm like, ah, right, this is a, this is a bit long. Cause if I, if I try to, I, I, I try to dodge it, mm-hmm. but when I'm trying to dodge it, it licked me at the, Literally at the, like my ear and, the, and right there in it. Mm-hmm. For a second, everything just went black, and it. My knees just, uh, my knees gave. Wow! Out of me. I just, uh, I, I just dropped. Boom! Uh, uh, must must be about thirty seconds. It's all. What did you do seconds. anything afterwards? No, one of my no. boys come pick me up, but they just they just walked to the. Ne- they were just looking for who's ever next. Then uh-huh. after, oh, okay, yo, know, so it wasn't like personal per se. Nah, it. The there was three of them who could come walking, and it was funny. The day before. One of the kids who was the, who they was with, he used to live on our road, mm-hmm. and I knew him. And the day before, I saved him because we we finished basketball practice, mm-hmm. and we bumped into him. Uh huh. So uh, when we bumped into him, he was like, "Yo, yo, look look, look who we found, innit?" Mm-hmm. And he started giving that chat like, "I want to want all of you. Mm-hmm. I want all of you." I was like, "Yo, mate, look, just be humble right now because mm-hmm. you can really get packed in real quick." Mm-hmm. But I saved him. I said, there "Ain't even a point to like." To do that, they leave him in it. Like is ways. There mm-hmm. wasn't no crazy stack at that moment in time. Mm-hmm. Then the very next day, he he said, "Let me let me get some licks back in there." Oh wow! So because even when I was hammered, I even like when I was bro, when I was falling, I looked down for a split second. He looked at me. I was thinking, "Yeah, yeah." Because after I dropped, most people just scattered. Once people saw the hammer, mm-hmm. and I got around. licked. Yeah. And what year was this then? You this were... this would have been. I was in year eleven at this point. Oh yeah, eleven. Okay, so I was. Wow. I would have been. Um, I'm one of the oldest. I'm born in September. Wait, so, so was this like almost like seven years after it happened to your brother? Then? Yeah, like the bro, the Fuck exact. Hell, mate. Do you know? I, I felt so bad because the next day, I never. I, I wouldn't have showed my parents. Yeah. But one of the younger kids told the teachers, "Oh, Alaric got hit and hit with the hammer." Mm-hmm. So they called my mum. Oh, and when they pissed. called and told her, she's like crying because this is like yeah. yo two kids. It looks like we're down bad, and uh, then she's like, <laughs> "Oh, well, we're well, well, done coming to this country." But well, did you live with both your parents? Yeah, for a, I lived. I lived with both mm-hmm. my parents for a majority of time. There was a time period when um my parents did separate, mm-hmm. and then my dad stayed in Belvedere, and mm-hmm. my mom migrated over to um Greenhive, mm-hmm. closer to Dartford. Ways. And they got back together. Yeah, yeah, they. Oh, um, that survived. Yeah, it's a, it's a wait, beautiful wait, love story. I, I, no, that's interesting. Wait, so how did you feel as a child experiencing that? Because, you know, they say nine times out of ten when your parents split, like it has an effect on the children usually, in it. Um, Do you know, that's a very interesting question because it's funny because my mum, my mum actually kicked me out and sent me to live with my dad in it. Oh, wow. And, so, um, and it was, was something mine, uh, me personally, I'm, I wasn't like a crazy naughty child, mm-hmm. but I was just like... um. I'm the baby of the family, mm-hmm. so I'm Small you, little brat, basically. Yeah, yeah. like I'm. I mean, if, if you tell me to do something, mm-hmm. I'm kind of used to not not necessarily doing it, mm-hmm. and someone else is going to do it for me just because I'm the baby. Mm-hmm. Or like, if you tell me to do something, I'm going to be. Maybe I've how how many? Just you and your brother? Just it's just me okay. and my brother, and it just me and my brother. So I'm kind of um I'm 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 not, I'm not used to like putting in no crazy work. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> like, even, even the same in terms of washing the dishes, mm. I just used to dry, and I was never because mm-hmm. my either older brother. Just, oh it? my god! You I just never used to dry. What type of fucking task <laughs> is that? <laughs> nah, bro, I, can't, I can't be washing that's the dishes. That's a minor, man. Yeah, that's it. it was, yeah. That was an easy yeah. job, innit? I'll be, I'll be chilling this in the drying, but um. Me and my mom kind of got into over something minute, and she said to me, she told me the night. Uh, What's had, this minute thing? Come on, bro. It, it, it was that low, just loads of little things. Because mm-hmm. this was the this was the time period when Lost was on, when Lost would I come on TV. Lost, yeah. Lost and Prison Break was still on TV. Yeah, we were still in. Yeah. Th- this was this was this is primary school days. Uh-huh. So we was um. So Wait, still really Lost like, came out when you were in primary school. Lost was Lost was primary Wait, school days. Wait, you're a baby. How old are you? No, I'm thirty. Lost. Oh wow! Look, that just makes me realize how much older yeah. I am than you. No, nah, bro, wait, well, wait, I'm but, 35, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, so you're my brother's age. Yeah, you're yeah, my but brother's so, age. But I remember loss going on when I was in uni. It's on there. No, no, no. Okay, no, no, let, me, no. let me close no, the door. I, I'm, 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 I'm deep. I'm, I'm trying to deep dates. You wouldn't have been uni lost though, no, unless you, no, unless no. you got put onto loss late the though. Right, strike. I was in university. But Lost weren't during the... Lost was... No, I'm talking about when it finished. Lost yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, Lost... 2018. Lost was... No, not 18, No, but that's... I was... 20... You're right, because Lost was oh, seven eight, series. Yeah. Lost was seven yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. And it started... Lost started early. Lost and Prison Break started um, near yeah, at the same time. Lost when I was in the secondary school. Yeah, it that's the yeah. secondary school, but it finished when I was in university. Yeah, because yeah. se- uh, I, I was locked into Lost. Yeah. I, I love Lost as well. But Lost is what fucked up my faith in... Um, series. series, yeah, because the ending, the ending, because you, you gave no, because I clocked these guys. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, when, the, when the... I saw Walt, yeah, because yeah. I was like, because bit. I remember when I found out that this was the last season. This is me. Oh my god, they they they, they had no idea what they was doing because there's no way they can tie up all these loose ends and make it make sense, isn't it? Nah, it was too much. That the, the, the plots got too much. They were just being ridiculous on purpose with no reason to read it back in. But I think I, I think the issue now that I'm older and I'm quote unquote in the industry, mm-hmm. I think the issue with Lost was a lot of times a series. Maybe let's say you write three seasons, mm-hmm. but they do so well. They say, yo. It has to continue. It has to yeah, continue. Th- I, I think that's what, because even like, um, do, I think it was season three when they was in the bunker and they had to type, um, he had to type their, those numbers. Yeah, no numbers. Yeah, yeah. The lottery numbers. They ended up being, yeah. Yeah. And like, if you didn't type them, there was a Mazza. Even technically mm-hmm. speaking, you could have ended the season then mm-hmm. because when you, once you didn't type those numbers, it mm-hmm. it was meant to come to an end. Like mm-hmm. the, the world's meant to come to an end, mm-hmm. something dramatic. But, it, it continued for far too long. It was still one of the best seasons. Nah, man. I, I Season remember, one? I remember while it was going on, I remember the feeling you're talking about. When it was going on, I was like, Crazy. this is amazing TV. Uh, uh, the way it ended just killed it for me. Even though the, the, I, 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 remember, I remember specifically, there was, um the he was kind of a religious. I think he, he used to sell drugs. I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, Mr. Echo. Mr. Echo. Come on, man. When, I'm a lost hey, guy, hey, man. Does, I know my shit. Because yeah. he was, um, he, he even read that, um, he, he read the verse from the Bible and was like, yay, do I walk through the valley mm-hmm. of the shadow? This is when he's going up against that big beast that mm-hmm. like, we didn't know what it was. But I was locked in. I mm-hmm. was like, <sighs> what do they call it? Black smoke or something? Black smoke. It was, it was yeah. like, we didn't even know, they never even really, um, in theory, really explained what that that's creature what I'm was. Saying. And that's was, when I clocked because I was like, you know what? The beauty of this for me, me is going to be they've done so much shit in these seasons yeah that at one point we're going to get an explanation and yeah. the explanation never ever came because the, the, the only way they could have done it was that it was a purgatory and you don't know what was real what but the was thing not. about it is I remember everybody was saying that so it's almost like the fans were speaking about what could this be what could yeah, this be you, and that was the answer that everyone gave in it that, that, uh, they were in that limbo place of did they die or not you know what I'm saying what yeah. was not, you, you really didn't know it was a uh, uh, but I do agree with you. I do think the writing could have been better to end it. But the only one thing was, if they if the writing was better and they gave more answers, mm-hmm. they would have been calling for more series because they would have been yeah. like, let's... But that's what the best... I feel like, in my personal opinion, the best thing to do is basically have a story. Unfortunately, obviously, I know but it's capitalism at the end of the day. Have a story and stick to it. Yeah, and leave it up. as that. No, no, I, I, I agree with you 100%. And then, for instance, if it's successful, then you can do the, the, the prequel, yeah, yeah. and the, what was it, what happens afterwards. They, they had so many good characters with Jack. I thought Jack was amazing. I yeah. used to have a crush on Katie as well. Jack used to get in with the girls as well, Yeah, though. but Katie, bitch, man. When she chose oh, Sawyer, yeah. yeah, I was fuming, man. <laughs> Jack's her guy. Yeah. And he was locked in as well. Yeah, though. thanks, yeah, man. Locked in, I'm locked locked in. In. And also, remember, Walt, Walt grew yeah, up. Walt, yeah. because, so they had to just make up a lie about it. And and it was like, oh my it. days, I saw Walt, but he was taller. Because obviously he's supposed to be on this island. It was only two days of past, but in actual real life, like what? It, it, it was it was it was 
Yeah, cause cause it was. I didn't even deep it went on for that long. Cause I remember I I, I started watching in primary, and that's that. Um, that's where some of the issues with my with, with my mum kind of was. Cause Lost used to come on at nine o'clock at night. Uh-huh. I'm still in primary. I'm meant to be in bed, uh-huh. but I was locked in. I would be like, you're watching Lost in primary school. Yeah, I was. I was. <laughs> I, 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 do you know me with TV series? I've always been ahead of my time. But I don't. Mm-hmm. About, I've always been ahead of my time. Like I used to watch Dawson's Creek. Um, oh shit! I didn't even used to watch Dawson's Creek. I was Dawson's Creek. I was. I was locked in uh-huh. to Dawson's Creek. Heavy, what? bro. Like <laughs> that was like my joint. And um, the one of the main characters he used to love. He used to love movies. He wanted mm-hmm. to be a director. And um, the the leading actress she went out with him and his best friend. So, but I was uh, from early. I was. Uh, I was locked in. Uh, and lo- it's funny because I didn't love Prison Break. Um, I loved Prison Break at the time. I thought pri- at the time season one and season two at the time was some of the best TV ever. ever. Th- th- that time period of TV. I'm only- back and watching it now. It's nonsense, though. Because it's it, but but that time of TV was elite. Because it was funny. My mum used to watch Lost, mm-hmm. and my dad was and my dad was Prison Break. Mm-hmm. So so when I got kicked, so when my mum kicked me out to go to sit school with my dad, uh-huh. I was I, I was kind of stuck with prison break. I was, <laughs> I was like, but 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 my dad was cool. He never uh-huh. used to stress stress a bedtime like that with uh-huh. me. So I because prison break was late. I think prison break might be like nine thirty. I used to just watch it all on uh, what's it called? I think I started well, watching the box sets. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, and until I yeah, because nine times out of ten. Sometimes whispers on the streets are this is critically acclaimed, isn't it? Yeah, that's where my mind's at now with series. It, to, for, in order for me to watch a series, I, I'm not going to stumble across it. I need to be certain that this is good because of Lost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I think that that's the one thing. But um, so no, that's like um. But to answer your question, it it with my parents breaking up, I don't think it necessarily affected me. I do believe that's um. But I've always been a bit hard headed because when my mom kicked me out. Mm-hmm. I just I just stopped talking to her, innit? Because wow. we used to do Sam, that. Uh, no, but she kicked me out. Yeah, like, yeah but still, but at that time, but I didn't even have a phone. It's not like now. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a phone. And when I went to my dad's, that was like, f- bro, it was that like freedom, innit? Because mm-hmm. um, my dad never like, you never used to How stress me. How freaking would you see your dad before you got kicked out? With like every 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 oh, yeah, every, every every other weekend. Okay. That's that that was the pattern, innit? So I was, um, and then it'd be me and my brother. So I see my brother every other weekend, but I was out every day. Mm-hmm. And um, because my dad was Belvedere, that was originally where I grew up. Mm-hmm. So like all my childhood friends, the only, ba- um, the, I was, because we were still quite young. A girl wrote a letter and posted through my dad's in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my dad never told me until like later, later on in uh-huh. life. And he was like, these young girls. posted a letter? Say yeah, what? She, I don't, uh-huh. He, he I- said she was saying madness. I don't, he never, uh-huh. she never gave me the letter. Or he never, uh-huh. he, he never even told me. He only told me like, like, Years, years down the line, yeah. I was like, "Yo, you, you come on, man, that's blocking, man." You, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, well, you on the line, vibe of oh, I like you and stuff like that, bro. He, I, I, do you know what? I, I wish he kept the letter because yeah. he said to me she was writing, and this is prime. But the one thing in England, you, you're oh, you're way more advanced, and at that age, coming from Africa, I was so scared of like my parents. Because obviously, um, we grew mm-hmm. up in time when your parents would use um different discipline methods. What oh, you mean, beat you? <laughs> I describe it in a politically uh-huh. correct way. But I, so I was in, um, bro, my dad, my dad's like six, six, one, six, two. But all my friends were scared of my dad. Mm-hmm. My dad's like, he's one of them dads. He gives, Wait, but you're Zim, yeah. yeah. In terms, because obviously you're quite light skinned. You're both of your parents are black still. Yeah, both my parents are, both my parents are light skinned. Oh, okay. um, it's funny because uh, my dad probably has a very interesting story mm-hmm. because my father was adopted. Mm-hmm. So he's his birth father is a priest from Switzerland. Oh wow! So he come over to Zim's, and um, he met my father's mom whilst he was doing they call it missionary work. Uh-huh. So he's given up blessings in, uh-huh. <laughs> in the church. But at that time period, um, gentrific- um, gentrification was still a thing. Mm-hmm. They didn't actually have whites and blacks who weren't allowed to be together. Mm-hmm. So when my dad was born, he had to be given up for adoption because there oh, was, wow. and his mom was from, was, was from the village. Mm-hmm. So he could have, um, it, it was a very tricky time. Oh, wow. So the person who adopted my father, that's who I'm named after, um, uh-huh. Eric Peter Pelé, that's, okay. that's the person who adopted my father. Oh, Pelé, uh, so, 
Uh, Pele is the do- your dad's adopted father. Uh, okay, wow. And the uh, well, do, I'm, I'm, the last name of your dad's adopted father. Yeah, Pele. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, which which and, is now Al- family. Al- Alaric is the, his actual name. He's, yeah. So in oh wow. If, if this was years ago, I would be introducing myself as Alaric Pele the fourth or third. But we don't. Oh, was your was your dad uh, no, name? No, Alaric? no. I'm, I'm, my dad's name is my dad's name is Neil. Okay. But so you're the second gran- then, isn't it? Yeah. I think no. But it's a family name, so I think oh, my wow. grandfather would have been like the the second or third. Oh, you should bring so, that back, man. Did, did I, uh, hey, if, if I have, if I have a son, uh, possibly, possibly, but um, possibly, possibly. Alex is a different you, name. But you mentioned as well that your basically, I think, is it your mum's mum? Um, my mum's mum is is is, is you know, yeah. my mum's mum is full Zimbabwean, uh-huh. but my mother's my mum's mum, uh, she was with somebody from Wales, mm-hmm. so that's how. Um, that's my my mother's my mother's father's Welsh, uh-huh. but I never had no dealings with him. Uh-huh. He, I, I, I don't know that back. You know, do you know one thing with Afri- African uh-huh. households? I'm, I don't know if you, I'm, I guess yours would be the same. We don't really touch into history because, especially unless you ask, they'll never ever tell you, boy. Yeah, that's and for me a lot. To, when I was younger, when you ask the question, say it's not your business. <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't get that, but nine times out of ten, maybe that was the vibe. Maybe that's why I just didn't ask. Because, yeah, that's the and yeah. especially I, I don't know in African culture, it seems it's it seems like rude to ask those questions. Yeah, yeah. So they I'm, know your age mates, you know your friends. Yeah, isn't it? exactly. That. So I just never like the whole background story with my mother's father and what what transpired. Mm-hmm. I genuinely don't know, but mm-hmm. I just know we never had no dealings with. Oh, right. With him in that sense, like a nothing. My 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 dad's birth dad, they got back in contact, and he um, we met him once in England. Uh, he was doing more more missionary work. I hope oh, wow. I hope he changed that. That's time interesting. So he's working for God and just gave yeah, his dad away. He, he or is, gave your dad away. He, but I but I don't think he. I don't know if the church. I don't know if I'm even allowed to say this yet. I, don't, mm-hmm. I hope um mm-hmm. I hope the you church can take it out anyway. If it's no, no, not, no, yeah. no, no, no. In that sense, it's fine. I'm I'm saying I don't know if the church are gonna come look. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know if the church are gonna come, come look at you. Well, not for me. This is this is this is this is this is the point. But you know, because those things in the ch- they do happen in the church a lot. But the church liked to bury those things, mm-hmm. so that's why he, I don't think he would have even been allowed to keep you look after my look after my father. Or keep anyway. his role anyway. Ha, yeah, I, I don't know what would have transpired if from that side of it. That, that's a very interesting part. Even with him meeting us, I'm not sure how that worked out. I don't know if he how he might because he passed away a few years after me and us. So once we was in England. Oh, you mean your grandfather? My grandfather, yeah, my yeah. grandfather. Your biological grandfather. Biological grandfather. Yeah. And we never, at that time, because we was kids, I must have met him when I was like eight or nine. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we didn't know the whole background story. Um, Only up until later on in life, then he passed away. What about your adopted, the adopted he, grandfather? He passed away whilst we was still in England. And it was, um, mm-hmm. he, he's like, he's part of the reason why I generally love storytelling, because he was like, he was such a beloved man in the neighborhood and mm-hmm. like um he he was um a real man of principles morals mm-hmm. and respect and he was like he was a proper loving a uh, proper loving grandfather mm-hmm. uh he used to live with us he, and he he always used to give us like little gems man he'd um it's funny he used to preach like being like a, being like a man's man when we was kids he'd have us out in the garden making bow and arrows mm-hmm. um shooting like pellet guns what in uh in Zim, 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 yeah, Zim. Yeah. He never, he, 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 by the time we come to england he passed away mm. Um, for my dad, that must because at that time period, my dad had moved to England, and my dad was looking to move the family to England because of the issues going on in Zimbabwe at the mm-hmm. time. There was a lot of um, unrest with the situation with Mugabe, mm-hmm. a lot of jobs like you didn't really. Oh shit! Oh yeah, and there was it some Tangara or something? Isn't it? Wasn't yeah, there? There, there, there was a lot. And do you know the one thing with Africa? I think what the fuck actually happened there now? Because last time, let me know, know if Go I'm on. right. Because what I heard is. As it as obviously Mugabe, everyone. I'm from from that bear man. I'm being fed the Western story. Yeah, yeah. So Mugabe was like an evil dictator. Is how they tried to paint him. Mm-hmm. And basically, there was a guy called Sam Tangerai that was kind of like the opposition party. Yeah, facts. And I heard that basically that they killed his wife. There, there was, and then oh, they offered him where he became president. But Mugabe was still kind of in charge. In charge. The, the one thing, the one thing I have to give to Mugabe, Mugabe was very intelligent. And when you look at Mugabe's background, he actually went and studied in Ghana. Mm-hmm. So he got his university de- university degree from Ghana. At the time, I think Ghana was the um, number one place for African schooling. Mm-hmm. So a very, in, a very intellectual man. What Mugabe, the choices Mugabe made was wrong. And I think power got to his head. Mm-hmm. 
And I think in Africa, you can do a lot of things that um, you wouldn't be able to do in Europe. Because but bro, there's, when we was in England, there was time periods when everybody's bank account got declared to zero. What do you mean? Like, this is something that I still can't even fathom to this uh-huh. day. But um, they declared everybody's bank account at zero. Uh-huh. Like, so everybody, like, imagine you waking up and then the news comes on and they're like, okay, guys. And where did they do that? In Zimbabwe. Everybody's, but we, by, by the time but we'd already left, everybody's bank account is declared at zero. If you had a hundred million, zero. If you had whatever, it, it depends. Well, that's a vibe though. If, it, if you're already low, then, If you're in the minus, uh, you might, yeah. yeah if you're on the, if you're on the back 10 up. minus, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, but things, I still can't even Well, you can't show me now. No, 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 no. But because in England it's, it's different. Nah, I know what. Fuck it's, it's, that. If it can happen there, it can happen here. If you've experienced that there, I'll be shook if it happened. Especially what they did to what was it what, Roman Abramovich in yeah, Russia. His, but but it, <sighs> you have beef for their country and you take all their resources. It's, it's funny you say that because then um to, to not not to mention the the infamous um Andrew Tate because he mm-hmm. said the same thing. When when they cancel you, that's what they say. They say that they um. They, they literally put a stop to everything you can do. I still don't know how that can transpire. And I don't have all the understandings to like explain it mm-hmm. in um in the most intellectual manner. I've never, because ex- to me, when I first heard that, I was like, I'm still, uh, when we come to, we grew up, we grew up in the, in quote unquote, the ghetto. Mm-hmm. If that happened to me, moments like that, I'm just going to the bank. What do you mean my bank's a zero? Mm-hmm. And they're going to tell you, bro, it's a zero. They can't do that for the nah, bank. I'm, 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 I'm like, yo, look, me and you're going to listen. I'm going to smash your face yeah. in. I need and he's like, that. bro, <laughs> the, the government took the bread. What do you want me to do? Listen, I, I'm ending up in jail. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. <laughs> There's no and way. that's the end of your story. That's, there yeah, that's, a, that's what I said. But I said, like, to me, I just can't compute how that can, how that can happen. Mm-hmm. So I hope, hope, God willing, that never happens in England because I don't know. But I don't think that could happen in England. I think um, as a society, I think we're too I far I feel like on. It's, uh, there's reasons why they wouldn't allow it to happen because I feel as though if it happens once, then the trust for the people are going to go forever. They can't get that back. But I know everyone's kind of in short term mm-hmm. about wars. I think 60,000, 80,000 it was. Uh, I think that's what, the one thing with Zims, I think they were very lucky there wasn't a civil war. Mm-hmm. Very, but but Zimbabweans are very peaceful. Most mm-hmm. of the country, and Africa's really like, Af- Africa, a- Africans were short tempered. We have big mm-hmm. egos. So there was very lucky there wasn't a civil war. So I think that's mm-hmm. why my parents decided to, um, decided to get out. And most of my parents moved, most of my family members moved to South Africa. I think I only have um, a small, very mm-hmm. small family left in, uh, in Zim's. And then, and by the grace of God, they're, they're, they're doing okay. But there's still a lot. There's, there's so many things wrong still in Zim's. And at the time, it's, it's, it's a really sad story because Zim's was the, uh, to compare it to now times, um, Ghana's probably the number one most up and coming African country right now, mm-hmm. right? I don't. I haven't got the statistics, but probably. But yeah, and I for say, tourism anyway. Yeah, people like to go to, there. And yeah. I, I, I saw it because tourism they made close like a like a hundred mil sound out there. Oh, maybe, perhaps, isn't it? But I know most people go there, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm plus because I believe like even Ghanaians are selling the house for US dollars. Mm. Ghanaians, if you sell a house in Accra, they're selling it. They're listed as US pricing, two four hundred thousand US. Zim's at the right. time. Zim's at the time was the breadbasket of Africa. Mm-hmm. Zim's was. We was doing so well, sporting wise. Crick, um, the cricket team was alright. We was hosting cricket, um, cricket tournaments. Mm-hmm. I used to go. Oh, I want to watch a few cricket matches with my father and Zim's. We, in theory, we could have been like, um, and plus we we have the Victoria Falls. So for tourism, mm-hmm. Zim's was always a tour, a, a, a tourist destination. Mm-hmm. After after everything happened and Mugabe took the land back from the farmers. Mm-hmm. And he gave it to a lot of the wrong people. Everything just went left. So I think. Wait, wait is, it, is this? Wait, is this kind of like what apartheid dish or something? Yeah, but it, yeah, it's it's to do with that there as well. So he took the, he he took the land from the um, white farmers mm-hmm. and just gave it to gave some, to whoever, bro, some like black people. Yeah, who, 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 uh, whoever was part of his camp that may not know how to farm and shit, bro. They that. They, they, just because you was part of his camp didn't mean you was actually getting money before. Mm-hmm. But once somebody gives you an asset. All of a sudden, like now, you actually have capital behind mm-hmm. you, yo, bro. Those they wouldn't grab Lamborghinis, but mm-hmm. they have to live on a farm. You're driving the lamb, the farm, mm-hmm. the tire pops, all your money's gone. Uh-huh. <laughs> Next thing, you're taking tires off the tractor to sell uh-huh. to sell it to get bread. There, there was just in so much food, and that was our bread and butter. Farming was our bread and butter, and um, once we lost that, most of our incomes was gone. And then obviously the Western world cut us off. Mm-hmm. They was like, yo. 
no more trading, no more nothing. And then from there, it was really... Um, all right, so everyone moved to the SA. Yeah, oh, wait, back, lot, back to what was it? Um, you said to my um, parents. To my yeah, parents. So, yeah. What? So with the, with that, that was um for me. Because, so because I got sensitive with my dad, that was like kind of like a uh, kind of like um, I don't want to say stress free, but it was that it was that freedom and just like um. So I didn't really stress. I didn't really stress it in that sense. And I think so you I'm, kind of enjoyed it because you had more freedom than you did when you was with your mum. Yeah, and that did you ever miss your mum during those periods? I was young though, bro. So it wasn't I'm like, did you though? So you did. Yeah, like, 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 like it was like obviously like you missed like it, it's, it's it's there's way different methods of parenting. My, my mother's very loving. My mother's very caring. But you know when you're young, you don't see that. You just see it as being annoying. Yeah, yeah. Because she's she would always be like, "Yo, you okay?" Getting on to you. Yeah, like yo. But she like, "What do you what do you want for dinner?" With my dad, it weren't really like. I didn't necessarily have a lot of choices in mm. it, but it was whatever he was cooking, mm. that's what it was in mm-hmm. it. I just had to be home at a certain time, but he wouldn't baby me mm-hmm. as much as what my mother was, as, well, mm. as much as what my more mother was. More freedom was a bit more relaxed, I guess. Yeah, it was like, and um, so, I was, so I was chilled out in it. Um, but I, I, I did miss my mum to a degree, but it was just nice not to have someone. Now, when they got back together, what was that feeling for you? Uh, that... And did you And did you see them getting back together like Nah, um, it's it's funny because when they got back, when they got back together, um, the part of the reason they got back together, my mother and um, my auntie, my my auntie Karen, um, my auntie Karen has like, been one of the biggest inspirations in my life. My mm-hmm. auntie Karen was like a hustler. She um she came to England a few years after us, mm-hmm. and um her and my her and my mum uh, launched a business together. Mm, what business? Buying and selling houses. Mm. So a, a little background on my auntie Karen. She um she first moved to Wales and she was doing nannying, and um what in Greece? Nah nah she moved in oh, Wales. Okay. So she come from she come from Zims went to who, Wales. Who did nannying in Greece? My again? grandmother. Okay, my grandmother. grandmother okay, my grandmother. Yeah. My grandmother. And then so my auntie Karen come, went went from Zims went to Wales, and um she's doing nannying in Wales. Then like, she just kind of started like. Uh, she, she's just a hustler. She's got like, like a, a really good business mind, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So she started um, getting one or two houses in Wales, flipping them quick. Then she come to England and she was staying with us um, in England. At this time, my parents were still together. Mm-hmm. And um, she bought like one, she bought one or two houses in England and her thing was like um, flipping them. Mm-hmm. So she would go to the house, tear the house down and... Um, got it. And, yeah. yeah. She, it like, there's even one, like a couple, a couple of occasions I'd come with her. She was the first person. She copped like a, a drop top E in it. E class. E class. Yeah, new yeah. plate. Like I brother, she she pulled up to school to get me. Uh-huh. Everyone was going crazy. And everyone was like, yo, <laughs> yo, what's that? That's hilarious. So yeah. she was bro, she's the first person. She took me, um, she took me to um Selfridges. And um Hamley's is like close Selfridges. I remember we went to Hamley's first, and I, I love Lord of the Rings. There was like these, um, the toys were 30 pounds for uh, Gandalf, uh mm-hmm. Aragon Allegros. And I was like, I need that, I need that. Mm-hmm. She's like, nah, man, like grab one for cheap because I'm taking the Selfridges. I was like, no. I was, I was trying to argue mm-hmm. not to go to Selfridges. She was like, uh, nah, let me take you. Let me let, mm-hmm. let me let me put you into some drip, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So she's the person who must be fly. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, f- fast forward, um, so when my mom, when my mom and dad split up and um, my aunt, my, my auntie and my mom, my mom were really close at the time. Uh, my auntie had bought two houses and she let my mom move into the other one. Like, mm-hmm. um, there was one one year across the street. We was in the other mm-hmm. one, and they read they read they read the book um, "How to Become a Millionaire in Ninety Days." My auntie was already getting it, and then like that kind of like was like she was like, "Nah, I don't care. I'm I'm taking it to the next level." Mm-hmm. Um, and they went to so your mum and your auntie read the book. Now. Yeah, but both uh-huh. together, and they went to um I'm I'm uh I'm 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 forgetting his name. He's a really big motivational speaker, uh, Richard Branson. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, we went to, and I don't, I personally don't love most motivational speakers and so on, because um, I don't like motivational speakers in the sense that I don't believe that's true. Mm-hmm. And I believe they're selling a dream to people who work extremely hard for a dollar mm-hmm. and they tell you they can help you get a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But very rarely do you ever see anybody get, in, mm-hmm. get a lot of money. But but they went to a convention. I went to two days from the convention and I never went to, mm-hmm. um, to any others. But they was like in this mindset of, yo, 90 days, we're going to get. So they, um, Marty set up meetings. They had loads of people who come and invested. Mm-hmm. I think people who actually went to the convention, they linked up with them as well. And they like bought into it. Um, there's even on that, they brought home like um, a duffel bag of money, like that dope boy type, mm-hmm. that dope, dope boy type-ish mm-hmm. duffel bag full of money. 
and things was going well, bro. They always like they purchased multiple multiple properties. The, things was going well for them, but they I think the mistake they made they purchased too many, mm-hmm. trying to like break into that break into mm-hmm. that market. It's funny because even we was go- we went to Fomba Park looking at houses. Where? Uh, Fomber Park, a neighborhood in London. It's like a, a okay, multi millionaire yeah. homes. Uh-huh. Um, we went down there. My mom was like, "If we was like, because if things went, if things, if things went how they was expecting, mm-hmm. you'll be living there." Yeah, like uh-huh. so. We're, we're looking at like the houses had the tennis courts and on them, and obviously it's funny because um, at the time, obviously I'm just I'm kind of now I've climb I've acclimatized myself to being in the Gaza mm-hmm. and the trenches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, at, the, at the time, I just didn't really want to leave my friends. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, I was just I was, at that time. I'm now a hood kid. I'm like, nah, man. Mm-hmm. I need to I need to be on the hood. Like, I need to be on the ends, bro. Mm-hmm. This, what? This, what? Change schools? Go to a prep school? Nah, like, mm-hmm. I, I've already been there, done that. I need to, uh, um, ends, man. Like, mm-hmm. ends is it, man? I couldn't see further than the than the hood anymore, so mm-hmm. to speak. And I, but they done that there. Then things kind of went things went left for them, and then I think that's what helped push my mom and dad partly to get back to. Get, Partly to get back together. Right. Wait, it? so hold up. You're <laughs> saying you think that basically your mum's dream not working out how she planned made yeah, her get back yeah, to your dad. It, 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 not, not made her, yeah. but I think I think it was I think it, it helped. kind of encouraged. It helped. It helped. It helped. Okay, because maybe your dad was giving her a supportive arm, like yeah, yeah, man, yeah. don't watch that man. It's calm. And even like I've you never, can always stay here, innit? I've I've never even had that conversation with with mm-hmm. my because maybe they would have got back together anyway. I don't I don't know, but I do think that definitely. That that business not working out helped out because but, but but that not working out was peak because all the investors my auntie left England. Um, oh, they were on the they were on to them, bro. Like bro, like um, not uh, bro. <laughs> yeah, honestly, when I say it was a bit peak because uh, my auntie was going off one bodybuilder at the time. Um, one bolo, bro, uh-huh. right? bolo. He was doing that. He was, he was competing and that, and obviously he invested with her as well. Yo, know, like w- when things went left, like I say, my auntie was a hustler. She's very intelligent. Mm-hmm. She she had the foresight to, or allegedly, allegedly, mm-hmm. sorry, she had the foresight to be like, All right, if I got two hundred, let me take twenty, and just keep that in the safe for if this don't work out, mm-hmm. I got I got a little exit plan. Mm-hmm. So people were searching for her, but people was calling my mom every day, like, oh wow. So which was she which, been back since? <laughs> Oh right, where's she now? I she, oh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Wait, how long ago was this? This was at this time period. That was like year nine. Pre- so that was um, Olympics. Uh, what do you mean? Pre- uh, what 2012 Olympics. Sorry, my bad. Like, um, um, before, be, be, before, oh, wow. be, be, before 2012 Olympics. Definitely before. Definitely before. Yeah, it was. It was, it was still like year nine time period because they broke up um, closer towards the end of primary, and um. And then they got back together second secondary like like your nine times. So I was living in between. I was mm-hmm. living in between um, Bellevue and Green Ave, and it was that perfect. But when questions. they got back together, now what do you reckon that did to you? Were you like, yes, mommy and daddy are back together? Nah, this is time, a vibe. At or time, you didn't give a shit. Dude, like, moving to England, I, I, you had to, it made me age my quick. So at that time period, it was just a bit like I, not. I didn't give a shit. It was it was nice. To, it's it's dope coming from a two parent home. Mm-hmm. Um, something that I have tremendous respect for, and I commend my parents for. Mm-hmm. So, um, but no, it, it, it just, it, affect, it affected, it didn't really affect me like that mm-hmm. in that sense. I, 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 I had no real crazy emotions to it because I'd experienced it, I guess, innit? So I weren't like... Sweet. Now, let's talk about this book now, innit? Yeah. Now, basically, who's the main character in this book? So the main character is on the cover art. His name is Cairo. Now, from my understanding, this is what I gather about the book. Let me know, yeah. know if I'm wrong. So Cairo, you said. Yeah. Now, Cairo is a vampire. Yep, Correct. Now, in this book, it's about basically, it's almost like Forrest Gump like, I'm assuming, in regards to, you know, for, have you watched Forrest Gump? Yeah, of course, yeah. So basically, well, yeah. in terms of, in Forrest Gump, if you, in the themes in Forrest Gump, it's, it's actually a love story. Yeah. But in his experience, there's many things that happen on the along the way. Big, uh, he meets a, a couple of like, um, um, he meets Steve Jobs. Yeah, in, yeah. And yeah. then obviously Apple's Apple, created. Yeah. And then the smiley face. Yeah, so all of yeah. that stuff, isn't it? Happens inside there. Like, where there's like little Easter eggs inside there yeah, of yeah. meeting people in life. So this book's about basically a vampire that um, basically interacts and gets, it seems like he interacts with a lot of historical uh, figures. figures. And um, basically, because of his uh, obviously long history in the world, 
He's got a lot of knowledge, isn't he? And yeah, got facts. a lot of game that he can uh, uh, pass down. And but in regards to this particular one, this is about uh, basically a Greek love story. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so, do you want to actually just give uh, your own background, background on the book as well? You, you, you're not you, you're not wrong um, with how you described it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. Of, there's there, there, there there would there is a lot of similarities between F- Forrest Gump and my novel. Mm-hmm. With my novel, he's writing his life memoirs present mm-hmm. day, mm-hmm. and you, you hit the nail on the head. Throughout the process of the five books, um, he's dropping a lot of free game mm-hmm. to um to everybody. Uh, there's a saying they say a wise man le- a wise man learns from other people's yeah, mistakes, mistakes yeah. and a fool learns from his own, right? So in that sense, he's I guess he's he's trying to give us his mistakes and hopefully people can learn mm-hmm. from them. The first book is really kind of like building my setting the scene for my fantasy world mm-hmm. and like just giving the laws for what can be done, um, what is allowed to happen, the powers that um the powers that some of the characters have, and a background story of a few of the characters with introductions to the few of the characters. And there is a few Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. There's multiple Easter eggs as well um, in in the first book. So um, he's only he's only 21. So when he first, when he when he's writing in ancient Greece, he's he was- 20, 20 to 25. So roughly 21. It's, tw- it's 21, yeah. He was 20. He's, he's, well, 20 he was, so, okay. About that, what does that mean? Does he, 21 when he became a vampire? Yeah, that he, was, he, okay. was, he was turned to a vampire at 21 uh-huh. and he's been alive for 100 years. But mm-hmm. if you if you live a hundred years as a twenty one year old, mm-hmm. especially if you're not aging, you don't mature. So the first hundred, the, his first hundred years as a vampire, and he doesn't remember how he was turned into a vampire. He doesn't remember mm-hmm. his um, first twenty years or twenty one years, mm-hmm. his human life. I dive into that. Um, that's probably going to come back in, in book three and four. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of like he, he's, just, he's just like it's, it's an extended adolescence. He's having a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. He's become a great warrior at the time. Uh, he indulged with a lot of females, mm-hmm. but he's just lacking. A, he's lacking a purpose in his life, mm-hmm. and um, he feels like he's missing something because he doesn't understand his past and where he comes from and kind of who who ex- who he is and um, what he's meant what he's meant to be be to the world when he meets uh, his golden flower, Christantos, mm-hmm. and she kind of becomes his inspiration, and she's his first actual. His first, his first actual proper love story. So mm-hmm. it's like that's at the high school love. That's at this very first ever mm-hmm. head over hills. So this is a, she was his first love. Yeah, she's okay. his first because he, he's been he, at the time he's been with multiple mm-hmm. females, mm-hmm. but he he had never been in love like this before. In love like this, this is like the first time when it's like you know sometimes because you know when love catches you. Yeah, facts were. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> it's like you just get hit by a bus. You don't even um. Facts, mate. You be waking up five a.m. like yo, she texts me. <laughs> <laughs> it's um that that's what happened. That that's what happens to him. And um, unfortunately for most people, your very first love story mm-hmm. isn't that great. It's funny because mm-hmm. there's a lot of talking points in the book. There they're both still quite young. She's quite young at the time, and she's gone through a lot of trauma as well. Um, so I've been, I think I've been quite fair on on that part as well. He has a lot of trauma in his life. Not, not knowing who you are is obviously a very big, is, is a very yeah, big facts, trauma. Yeah. But well, I, I was going to say something to you as well, because obviously yeah. you mentioned, uh, you said that you're a big Lord of the Rings uh, fan. fan. Yeah. Now, in those sort, because basically me, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, same, same, same. same. So in those communities, yeah, yeah. as in the, the world that you're entering, yeah. You know these individuals, they're very nitpicky. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, in regards to your world, have you, uh, how detailed, because obviously you said you're a freestyle writer, isn't it? Mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. So how detailed have you actually thought of everything? Because mm-hmm. when I, because what I did was, uh, when I read the parts of the book, yeah, I was on a, because obviously I, I knew I was going to meet you yeah. to ask you uh, how deep you've actually thought of everything. Because what I discovered is, uh, basically, in the book, you said Dracula yeah. is is kind of big bro, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But if Dracula is his big bro, year wise, I think Dracula is only five hundred or something years old, isn't it? Yeah, but it's um, and he's met Zeus and done that. He, he, so he, 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 you are right. He's yeah. he's he's meant he's older than he's older than Dracula, uh-huh. but remember he's he's twenty one still, uh-huh. so he's still he's still young. Mm-hmm. So even though 
age wise. Oh, Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, but so he's time, 21. Yeah. He's met Dracula. Dracula's older than him when yeah. he met Dracula. So, okay, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the, 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 the origin story of, of Carl Dracula, Vlad Tepesh, uh-huh. technically speaking, when he was turned into a vampire, he has a lot more human years uh-huh. on Cairo. Oh, okay. so even even though Cairo, so no matter what point they meet, he's always going to be his big brother, yeah, isn't it? So, yeah, so that just could have happened during the okay, yeah. yeah. But that, but that, but that's an Easter egg. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, that's, a, yeah. that's an Easter egg as well. Certain people who are mentioned, they Easter eggs. But the forethought, uh, the one thing with writing, it's the, and that's a great question, by the way, because the forethought, the forethought won't really be shown. Up until the series is done, or yeah. up until I'm further along the series, to be like, whoa, like the details and the information and mm-hmm. the the second book is set in Japan mm-hmm. as well. I mentioned Izan- um, Izanagi and Izanami in the first book. Mm-hmm. Again, that's an Easter egg because the second book is in Japan. Mm-hmm. So when somebody picks up the second book, they'll be yeah, like, oh, well, he mentioned in Japan, isn't it? Yeah, and as somebody that watched the series, that, that's why I love Game of Thrones so much, isn't it? Because it's almost as though this guy's almost... Built the, yeah, he's built the world first. So this is a world that spans generations, generations, generations to the point where he's thought about the religions that take place in this world as well. And then... It, it, Obviously, everyone's watching the, the series, whereas me, I'm lo- looking at the... The minor details. Oh, that person over there doesn't even know that his granddad used to chill with his granddad, isn't it? Uh, the, uh, so, uh, like I said, because you're a game, uh, Lord game of the Rings person, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know if you're doing all of that. Nah, bro, 100, 120%. My, the amount of time and... The amount of time and dedication I put to studying mm-hmm. and like the forethought, even minor... It's so funny because you... When I write little Easter eggs, I hope that people will notice yeah, and be catch like, on to them, yeah. bro, I'm, I'm such a... But that's greatness, you know? Oh, I appreciate it, bro. I'm hoping... Because, bro, I watch like... um I don't know if you do this as well. um hope, mm-hmm. hope most people don't laugh in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I do, I go watch like fan, um, fan reactions to uh-huh. like um, Star Wars, Game of Thrones. You know when they go in detail mm-hmm. about the writing and what yeah, certain bits Yeah, Game of Thrones, I did that, was it? It's some like full lore or something. What's it called? There's, bro, there's, there's so the many... The lore thing. I go back into it. I'm like, oh, wow. This is what... You, I only, I've only i only done it for Game of Thrones though, isn't it? I can't... I, did, and there's not, some uh, Pixar movies with the Easter eggs and shit. I never... I, I never knew there was such like a big... um a big collection and a, and a big fan base of people who do that. Because even with, like with Harry Potter and that, mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God. But mm-hmm. I... I hope and pray. To me, that's like that's like one of the moments mm-hmm. where like um I'm at home and hopefully it comes across my timeline. Mm-hmm. Um reaction, yeah, tell, t- tales of a lonely wanderer, and they're going in detail, even if they're wrong talking about it, mm-hmm. to me that's like, yo, I-, I might be in the kitchen tearing the kitchen up. Like, ah! yeah. yeah, but I'm saying in but terms, I feel like that as in for instance, I feel obviously even though you freestyle right. Certain times I feel as though it'll be extremely beneficial, because obviously you might have already done it already, to literally have the whole world. On like, yeah, I don't even know if you've got a board in your house that only you have got. So you know that this kid, that you haven't even told them the story yet, but you know the relationship between this character and this character no, way before it happens. Y- you are right, but that's in my mind. Yeah. That's why, so, so in my, that's what I say, for me, it's way different though, because the only, um, but that's in my, so it's not as though there's not like a storyboard and, and um, mm-hmm. parts of information that I know I have to do A, B, C. Mm-hmm. Like I, I literally, I've, I've, I've just finished the second book. I already know what the characters from the second book are going to be doing in book four and five. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's already there. Yeah. It's, um, it's just transmitting the thoughts from my head on, on, on onto, um, onto, onto a mm-hmm. bit of parchment paper. But that's good though. As in, cause I like, just, because people like me, cause I, I, I remember wh- while I was reading it, I was doing things like my, my head naturally, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just like a natural, like skeptic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? But my brain goes to things like, okay, cool. He's wearing a dire wolf. Yeah. Uh, he killed a dire wolf. When was the dire wolf extinct? Yeah. 10,000 yeah. BC, isn't it? Yeah. And I was doing things like, okay, cool. So when was uh, uh, Achilles about? Oh, uh, he said he he spoke to, what's his name? Homer, my man about uh, Troy. Homer's Iliad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And, and that's the beauty of the type of stuff that you're doing because this is where individuals like me, our brains go, go, go. And every time it, it, it adds up, obviously, because I know it's in the infancy of the actual writing the story. So I know there's all, you can always make, you might not even touch on the most of it yet, isn't it? No, no. But 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 it, bro, that's actually that's super dope. And um, it's it's funny because there's always there's a, there's a bit of nerves and anxiety with mm-hmm. this because a lot of the information from there isn't um 
the dates and so on don't always necessarily match up because that part it of history have to right now. No, no, because yeah. that part of history, some of some of that part of history is is lost mm-hmm. to a degree, right? But it's super dope. And I've spent so much time mm-hmm. doing research. And um because I involve a lot of mythological gods, even like with the set, one thing I'm one thing I'm very conscious of is to be respectful mm-hmm. to because oh, yeah, yeah. at that time, that, that mythology really was a religion. religion. I think it is to still, still to, to some degree. people. Yeah, yeah. That's and like even even bro, like when it comes to like um the second book and where the second books in Japan, the amount of time I've spent researching and like just trying to be respectful. But of course, um, it's it's fantasy, and I'm allowed I'm allowed to take my my own spin, spin. on things. Yeah, it's because like for example, um. I released a picture a couple months ago and it was an Easter egg. Mm-hmm. Sun Wukong makes an appearance mm-hmm. in the second book. Mm-hmm. Sun Wukong, um, Sun Wukong's blown up recently because mm-hmm. he, the game of him was coming out. Mm-hmm. He's always been a big figure and Sun Wukong was actually the um, a character that most people know and love, mm-hmm. Goku. Mm-hmm. Goku's based off Sun Wukong. All oh, right, I didn't know that, yeah. So, so um, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, but he, but, but Sun Wukong is from China. So it's very... I wanted to be a little bit careful because a lot of things he that Sun Wukong done. Um, I'll, well, I'll, I'll give one or two of his stories. Mm-hmm. So Sun Wukong um, is he, he, he is a monkey king. He was afraid of death, so he went to hell, and he rubbed his name out of the book of life and the book of death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, All right, yeah. so that he, so that he couldn't be killed in it, but he wasn't satisfied with that. He um he went on to achieve immortality. I think like uh another four or five times he mm-hmm. was um he 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 ate peaches in um in the god's temple he, he mm-hmm. immortal peaches he, he drank... well, is that why Goku is a monkey that's the yeah, that, monkey that, 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 I, I, I will believe that's why Goku was like with the tail uh-huh. that's that's the Sun Wukong um flying Nimbus Sun uh-huh. Wukong uh-huh. if do you remember the staff from Dragon Ball I don't remember that though. But uh, yeah, I don't, I, my Dragon Ball Z memory is fuzzy, man. He, long, long time ago. He, he had a staff. The staff. Sun Wukong used to fight with the staff. Mm-hmm. Goku was really and like even how Goku, how he laughs and ki- Kitty, mm-hmm. that's Sun Wukong. So, th- but that was like super dope to have a, um to have Sun Wukong in my book, and that was and um that was also me paying homage mm-hmm. to um um uh, uh, pardon me, I forget his name for a second. The person who created. Dragon Ball Z because mm-hmm. he passed away oh, yeah, a, yeah, couple, yeah, yeah. a couple months ago. Yeah, I remember that. It was all over socials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was um it was really dope for me just to pay homage mm-hmm. to him and um and to have a character like Son Wukong in a book. But there might be one of the dates, there might be one or two transgressions. But, but, but don't even even with those in it, because I even I, like I was uh like I said, I do the same thing for what's it called uh Game of Thrones and even George R. uh R. 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 Martin. Uh, he he does the same thing as well because the fans are getting onto him. But well, hold on, you said blah 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 was that, and he's like, oh fuck, what's wrong with these guys, isn't it? And then he literally he has, has to, to change write it. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it, it, that's the one thing. It's it's, it's so funny because um, now I understand why. Like when people ask artists, yo, like how do you not know the words to that song? Like you wrote it, mm-hmm. bro. They, some some artists are doing a hundred songs a uh, day. Yeah, it's facts. Like, yeah, facts. I, I'm I'm still writing. I remember the base storyline. There's parts of the book like you might read something from the book today, and I'd be like, oh shit, that's some. Um, I said that, yeah. Yeah, that's wavy. But I, that's why it's interesting. And and this is something that will be that will tell over time. Mm-hmm. Come the end of the series and, and I reach five books. Has every character's storyline been the same? For example, Honor. Honor Honor goes through quite a lot. And I and I answer some of the questions with her husband. In the first book, she um she alludes to how she become a vampire and mm-hmm. how one of the gods own her. She um she couldn't have she couldn't have children. So she went to see a witch doctor and the witch doctor gave her a cup of blood to drink, which turned into a vampire. And she ends up decapitating her husband at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, a God comes to see her and says, I can bring your husband back to life. Mm-hmm. And in the second book, I give answers as to what happened with that mm-hmm. and to some of the, some of the um, traumas that come with that. What is that the second book? No, no. This oh, is, this is a poetry th- th- book. This is... Um, there's an interesting story with with well, this future. book. Yeah, that's it. Future, <laughs> future Hedges. Yeah. Fifty Six Nights. I was this. The second book is set on mental health, uh-huh. and um, I'm a method. I've, I've said before, I'm a method writer. So like, when most people read the first book, they really connect with the feelings that the the sentiment of love and how it feels. They really feel like mm-hmm. like you can really you can really feel it. Um, 
which is which is which is great to hear as an author because the second book is really predominantly set on mental health mm -hmm. and the second book is the processes of how you deal with multiple things with mental health mm -hmm. dealing with loss um understanding how understanding how communication let me just make sure these cameras are still on it no, go on, bro. Yeah, you, 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 uh, 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 under under understanding Okay, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, we cheat, yeah. Uh understanding how understanding how you can become better, moving forward and just like um just going through all the, the, the stages of depression. There's so much in there with mental health mm -hmm. and um learning how to talk about your feelings and having having important figures that are healthy for you. Mm -hmm. But right and dealing um which this this was really fun but really hard. I have the Schengen, the Japanese angel of death, in the second book, mm -hmm. and he's kind of tormenting him. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I call it like um, pardon me, I call it the monkey on your back. Mm -hmm. A lot of people s struggle with that in day to day life. Having that and writing about that constantly mm -hmm. was extremely difficult and draining because I have to be in that space. Mm -hmm. one, one, and like one thing I say to like anybody who writes. Because I think I, I find I personally find this very difficult. Mm -hmm. There's no one to cheer you on. Like when you write, mm -hmm. no one sees. You, it's, it's just you alone. Mm -hmm. There's no one cheer like cheering and clapping you writing. When you're writing, most people are gonna say, "Yeah, do that tomorrow, man." Mm -hmm. A lot of people won't understand the space that you have to be in, and creativity is <laughs> is a difficult mm -hmm. thing to have. You, you you're not always creative. Creativity sometimes strikes you, sometimes it doesn't, mm -hmm. and not having people to constantly chat. Um, clap and cheer you on mm -hmm. Like when you're playing sports Yeah Everyone People come to games Clap, clap And like clap. You, you hear a lot of people They might be um, I'll, I'll, I'll use I'll use an analogy of tennis You might be Playing um, In one of the grand slams The grand slams are five sets You might be down Two um, two sets But you know your, You know your crowd A, a, a crowd fan favourite you can lean on the energy from the crowd. Mm -hmm. Most tennis players, whenever they're playing, they look up to their box. They do something. Mm -hmm. They look up to the box. They're looking for the energy from the crowd. Bro, I got no. In that sense, mm -hmm. they ain't. Now, but I'm saying in terms of obviously, like you're writing about mental health. Right? Yeah. What, uh, uh, are there times or like what do you reckon your biggest mental health challenge has been? Ooh, that's um, that's a dope question. Uh, there's some ones that th there's some that's very that's very similar in the book for me personally. I'm a very happy-go-lucky person. Mm -hmm. Um, I always show a lot of love to people. They always say the happy; th those are the people who's normally the most the, the saddest. Mm -hmm. And I, I would tend to agree with that a lot of times because me personally, I don't. I deal with my mental health mm -hmm. in a in a good way. I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been, I've done therapy and stuff. No, no, it's a very good it's a very good conversation. Um, no, I've never done therapy. I've done self therapy. Mm -hmm. But I guess that doesn't. But doesn't what count. does the self therapy count as? Do you? Uh, I, I'm so self therapy. I can look in the mirror and I'm very honest with myself. Mm -hmm. For example, if something happens, I don't lie about that situation. Mm -hmm. I'm very um honest with what that with what that situation was, mm -hmm. and I I can look at look at something and be like, okay, I done this right. This was wrong. Mm -hmm. I have to be better. Yeah, I'm very. I have a very good understanding for who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. My biggest, my biggest battles, I, I have a lot of demons, quote unquote, mm -hmm. um, past traumas from, from childhood, mm -hmm. um, growing up, even in the sense of like, um, like, like, uh, going back to that secondary school, dealing with like, um, a lot of the fights and just, gr just growing up in around the trenches. Most of us grew up with PTSD, but we don't really realize that mm -hmm. there. A lot of times when I'm out with people now, if I'm out on dates, my head's always on a swivel. Mm -hmm. Girls are always like, why are you trying to look at other girls for? Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that there ain't nobody around that mm -hmm. things can go very left. But um, those are things which I still deal with. And I, sometimes I'm not the, a negative for me, I don't talk about how I feel. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them people, I, I deal with it alone. That's why when I'm out and you're with me, my energy is always great. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I might not be the best texter because when I'm alone, mm -hmm. now this is like, it's my time to shut off because I'm so used to being a, a positive energy for other for other people. Mm -hmm. They need to recharge, get that energy back, yeah. so you can give to somebody else uh, the the next day, I guess. And even 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 I think sometimes I've struggled with that in relationships because not having the language 
to be able to explain that to somebody. Mm -hmm. And then people in relationships are like, but why are you always so nice to other people? Mm -hmm. But with me, you're not always like that. Oh, so they're feeling that you're kind of performative. Yeah. Like, oh, sense. wow. Okay. You're over here. You're being so lovely. But with me, you're quiet. You, yeah. you're, you're nonchalant. Like, you're like. Now, but another thing I want to uh, tackle before yeah. we uh, go is um, basically, um, I, was, I think, one, you need to give yourself a lot of credit in it, but with Thank these, you. isn't it? Because, one, I feel like there's something very, very special about like a paperback. The fact that you've had uh, a, a dream, realized it, and actually pour it out. Anybody that does something like this isn't it, always gets my respect, isn't it? Because I'm somebody that I need things like these to keep on going in regards to uh, to have a dream and yeah. to pour out a project, to pour out. So obviously, obviously, you work here in on the railway. In the, in the railway. How do how do you balance work life and do, do people at work know your author as well? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, what's that like? That is extremely difficult because. Um, I'm also so so along with the along with the books. Obviously, I've got the second book coming out and the poetry book. Um, but I'm also making an animation series. I've um I've actually started making the animation series, and um, one of one of the biggest dreams is to turn it into a play. Mm -hmm. uh, the play is really on a back burner. Uh, the animation series is in full effect. I've got um three three staff members currently. Mm -hmm. Raw. Right. Where? But, what country? Are you... uh, I have Bones who works for me. Um, what, what, what we area? work together. In, he's, I... he's in Turkey, but he's, oh, and he, Bones is an animator. Bones, he is an amazing animator. He is a um, YouTube. If you go on YouTube, type in Skull Guy. Uh -huh. Amazing. And then I have Tyler who does my character molds. Uh -huh. And what country is he from? Tyler's from America. Oh, okay. So um, and it's good because I have um a lot of I have some family in America. Um, so so in that sense, that's really good. And then I have uh, a voice actor. I had my first ever character who's going to play Ares, and he's based in um in Saudi. And he's he's, he's been. How do you find these guys? Uh, Fiverr. Fi yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fiverr. And this the Discord community is amazing. I was Discord, Discord, Discord. Oh, sure, yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't familiar with Discord. Uh, Discord yeah. is amazing, but it's it's extremely difficult because to be able to and I'm like I'm doing a book launch mm -hmm. to be able to fund everything. I'm working six days a week. So is your work funding your dreams? No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, well, we, my work money, yes. Yeah, okay. My work money helps with everything I'm chasing. But doing six days a week, 12 hours when I can, mm -hmm. being in that space to be creative. And then you write, how many times you, how much I, I try, hours I, I, did you I, write? I, I try to write for an hour a day. My one fall off will normally always be gym. Because uh -huh. if I, I, I try to always write. So if I do 12 hours and I'm tired, I might miss gym and try and still and still try to rap. My lunch in my workplace, most people don't see me no more because mm -hmm. the lunch breaks. Any any spare minutes so I do get, you write um, one hour a day. I try I, I try to at least do an hour a day, but it's difficult. And even this is one thing I struggled with this year. I probably could have finished the book earlier mm -hmm. if I was just concentrating alone on the book. But because I started um dibbling and dabbling with, with the animation series mm -hmm. and the vet. Animation series is complete different writing. Mm -hmm. You can, I, for example, I believe I'm a great author. I believe I have come up with an amazing story. Mm -hmm. If anybody picks up my book, that's an amazing story mm -hmm. in and amongst itself. But writing an animation series is completely different. Mm -hmm. The structure is completely different. Yeah, facts. Structure in a each episode needs to be a story in itself, and, and as well as follow or like a a, a long theme, form story as well, isn't it? And plus, oh, because um. So you, you you write a pilot episode mm -hmm. alone. That that's just like one explanation. In the pilot episode, you still have to write a script for the for the pilot episode. Mm -hmm. You still have to write character reasons for all the actors for why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Like a like a character backlog for them. And it's complete it's a complete different style of of mm -hmm. writing than writing a book. So which is and um it's tough for me because I wrote the book, there's so much that I want to get into it. Mm -hmm. But having conversations with Bones and Bones is amazing. He'll be like, look, you need to tell a clear and precise story. And it has to be something that people can watch one time and be like, okay, I get this. Mm -hmm. This is the reason. So a lot of things in the book is getting caught. Mm -hmm. But that's, it's a difficult thing when it's your own yeah, work. Yeah, when it's your work. You're killing your own baby, essentially, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. So learning, dealing with that process is is very difficult. But the original question is, it's difficult to deal with it at work. Um, it's, it's difficult... It's difficult to um to deal with it in the sense of not having the time. I uh, the reason why I'm doing everything why I'm doing now with the book launch and so on, 
I don't think we've seen the best version of Alaric Pelé's uh-huh. Alaric Pelé's writing style because I don't necessarily have the time. God willing, when uh-huh. I get to a stage where, okay, I'm writing full time uh-huh. and now my life can be based just around writing, uh-huh. I think that they will take my writing up to a... I feel like it's kind of sad, isn't it? Because it's one of those ones where you know clearly what you want to do, isn't it? And it's a case of what all you need right now is the time resource to be able to execute what you want to do. Nail on the head. But you also need to live as well, isn't it? That's the issue. Do you, do you know, like, um, in the whole sense with writing, do you know, like, um, for me personally, right, one of the most important things... It's just giving other people opportunities. When mm-hmm. I like, when I sit down and think, um, I'm, I'm sure you must do this as well. When you sit down and think, okay, what do I want my legacy to be with this? Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, um, I would love, I would love to be, um, to be a best-selling author. I would love to have a, a Oscar-nominated um series, mm-hmm. but those things are all glitter, mm-hmm. quote unquote. To me, the most important things will be giving somebody an opportunity who never had it. Mm-hmm. Somebody comes on, they do a voice acting for the animation series. Mm-hmm. He goes on to be a, a lead voice actor for a, for a Disney show, mm-hmm. turns up to be an, an amazing star. Mm-hmm. Like I always think to myself, I wonder if um, Emma Watson or Daniel Radcliffe, if they just call JK Roll up on a random day, like, hey, mm-hmm. JK, you changed my life, man. Giving people mm. an opportunity like that. That's what... what that's what I want my legacy to be with with writing and everything I'm creating. Just giving giving people opportunity that never had it and giving them a chance to show off their artistic talents. Mm-hmm. And even um, that's the thing. The same with the book launch. I could have just rented a space, made merchandise, and um, just done up book signings. But I turned it into a whole event day where from um from five to eight I'm doing game and VR, eight to ten entertainment having comedians and having poets come out and perform. Oh, when is this? When is this? Uh, September 21st. Okay, September yeah, yeah. 21st. If, 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 um, if people want to come, go on, go on my Instagram, go on, um, events brights. Well, click the, click, click the link in my bio events. Hopefully I'll put the link underneath the video as well. That'll help. And, and then, I, in fact, I, I want before, I also wanted to give you a shout out for something as well. Yeah. Now me, I was one of these people that I didn't really get and be a young boy first and foremost. Yeah. yeah. And, there was a few songs of his that I've liked, but I probably like five NBA Young Boy songs, yeah, out of uh, the millions that he's got. And you put me on one of them, in it, which is the Ronaldo song, yeah, innit? Yeah, cold. Cold song, isn't it? So I'd like to thank you for that. In fact, and one more question I've got for you as well <laughs> is uh, basically, if life was perfect for you right now, yeah, and you could do what you want to be, uh, you could do everything you want to, to do, what would you be doing? Oh, Ash, Ash, I love that question. So, do you know, one of my biggest dreams, I said earlier with, um, it's really, it's, it's really with a play. So what I, what I would love to do, I would love to be in New York or either London. Those are my top two. And I'd love to go to a drama college, um, a college that hasn't got a lot of backing. Mm-hmm. And I would love to um, film the experience with um, all the adults, the teachers, so on. Um, all the all the performer, sorry, and film I'm filming from 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 the start, from casting, creating the play with um with all the kids, and giving them showcasing their ability and giving them a chance mm-hmm. to make it mainline stream acting mm-hmm. in theatre. That I, I, I to me, I think that's like and um that moment, like um seeing the play come to life at the end of it, mm-hmm. and then hopefully the play again, the play being the um, the play gets made into a mainland play and having mm-hmm. it on Broadway. And they get to tour it and stuff. And like, and just giving all the kids opportunity and hopefully seeing them go from like, from where they were in a situation where they wouldn't have got a lot of opportunities to hopefully becoming um, the next superstars, the mm-hmm. Michael B. Jordans of their, of their time and so on. That for me is like, um, that, that, that's one, that, that's one of the things I really, that's what I'd want to do. If, if everything was mm-hmm. perfect, that's what I would have in place. And then hopefully that could be something that you just, Keep doing, keep repeat, dance. repeat, repeat, yeah, and go different places. Sweet, well, bro, lovely for coming on, man. Lovely for coming on. Hopefully, all your work uh, does what you want it to do as well, man. And thanks for the gifts as well, because apparently these are mine now, isn't it? Yeah, they are, they are, they are, they And um, Love. I, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity, bro. And um, I appreciate, I, I appreciate you reaching out. And this is a dope opportunity. 
And everybody, make sure you like and subscribe. Oh, shit. I never knew that. Yes. <laughs> like and subscribe. Yeah. yeah. Please. But for some reason, I don't know what happened this week, but the subscribers have just been going up randomly, innit? Yeah. That's what we need, bro. That's what we need. And oh, obviously, oh, like wait. you said, this is going to get more views than Adam's, remember? I, 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 yeah, <laughs> Adam, I'm coming for yeah. you. I've got a question for you as well, by yeah. the way. Do you... um? Because I know you go to church and so uh-huh. on. When you bump into friends, do you run down them and be like, do you run down to them and say, hey, yo, have you subbed? Have you subscribed to the... No, I don't. I'm very, very relaxed with this, isn't it? I don't tell nobody nothing. I, my, my vibe is, listen, let everybody do what they want to do. Hopefully I'm putting out content and people mess with it and then they just want to do it. I am not. I don't force none of my friends to, to, to do anything in it. I just pour it out. I think I've sent one broadcast to people when I was near a thousand subscribers yeah. to be like, listen, Push. I'm 30 away. Just, just like it, innit? Yeah. Push. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting because that's the, the one thing about London. A lot of people say London is extremely difficult mm-hmm. to make it because the support system mm-hmm. from close ones just isn't there. And I disagree. The reason I would say is, for instance, depends on what your dreams are. If you're someone that wants to do astronomical things, then, for instance, if you like, for instance, if you want to sell a, a million books, your friends and family are not even going to matter at that point in time. Really and truly, what you need to do, because I've seen it on both ends, if you have amazing product, then your friend, you, your friends are gonna one. Your friends are gonna wanna support on the vibe of oh, I know this guy. Yeah, 100%. and for instance, if it's amazing products, you can't stop people from buying it. So like back in the day when I had an event that was very, 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 very popping, I didn't need to beg none of my friends to come to the event wanted because to come everybody it's wanted to come. So you just need to make hard it's, product, man. It's I, I think you're right. It's the work. The only question mark is, especially when you first start off, even if the work mm-hmm. is great. It's being noticed mm-hmm. for the great work. It's lovely when they support That's you. The, yeah, hundred percent. When they support you, it has a huge impact, and it's free as well for them to do it. Hundred percent. That's oh, one of those ones, isn't it? Wait, by the way, um, because I even forgot myself. Uh, on on Instagram, uh, tales of a lonely wanderer. Um, oh, anybody yeah, yeah. who want, anybody who's looking for like any artwork, more like background stories of the characters, tales of a lonely wanderer, and then my personal page, I replay. It's all book stuff. I only Sweet, post book stuff. Pull- Tell you what's changed right now. In a different field, different lane right now. Now I'm in the mud, switching lanes right now. Passive income getting paid right now. Used to roam around with sinners, bulldozers and killers. Now we focused on figures, three course meals for dinners, five star suites and villas. Now the swag get different. Cause the bag is different. This can't come out.